All right, I'm opening it up. All right. What's up, everybody? Happy Wednesday. Happy Wine Wednesday. Yes. And we uh, are at the winery, Bonobo Winery in Traverse City. Um, just so you know, unfortunately, on Wednesdays, we're only open to six because I see people trying to get in the door right now. Oops. Can we go talk to them? No. No. All right. We'll talk to you guys, yeah. everybody here, because we, see people's party. we have a anyway. great, wonderful, yes. amazing show. I mean, this is this is tops, right? We have a pretty legendary guest. Yeah, our guest today is the one, the only Ralph, Ralph Macchio. Macchio, the Karate Kid. Yeah, dude. Um, he's done so many things, and we're so lucky to have him. And if you didn't know, Ralph is a huge, uh, I want to say wine owner. Wine aficionado. Wine aficionado, yes, that's, that's true. So he loves wine probably as much. He and his wife love wine, yeah. so we're so excited to hear his input yeah. on some of the notebooks. Yeah, and you know what wines he's trying right now, yeah. where he's at with his wine uh, prowess, if you will. Um, and we're going to talk all about, obviously, Cobra Kai, which is uh, his new show, which is now about to go into the third season. Uh, and that is on Netflix, but the first yes. two seasons are coming out uh, August 28th. It's on YouTube Red, yeah. which is folded into Netflix, so yeah. all the first two seasons are going to be on Netflix at the end of August. Yes, and besides just Ralph, we do have a yes. few more things here that are happening at Panoma Winery. Um, Winemaker Chef Cornell. Yes. But first, let me just say, I just have to say for this week, I am so happy that Kamala Harris is on the ticket. She's the first woman of color yeah. time. on the ticket, and I'm so time. excited. She's amazing. And I'm sorry, or I want to say I'm sorry if you're a Republican. I'm really not. It doesn't matter if you're a Republican or a Democrat, whatever. This is historical. And it's historical it's amazing. Moment, and she knows great. are great leaders. Yes. Okay. We I'm just going to put it out there. Sweet. It's really we nice to it. have good stories happening right now because you watch the news and it's just depressing. Yeah. So I'm very happy personally. I like that. Right. Thanks, That's Carter. Yeah. I'm getting off my soapbox. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you're very happy, happy person. I mean, I think that bodes well for me, right? And are you happy too? I'm very happy. I mean, it's about time. It's been a long time coming. And um, just, you know, female presence is a higher part in the office, which we'll, soon we'll get there to be president one day. Um, but uh, anyway, besides politics, we don't have to talk about that. We're, we're going to talk about wine, and we're going to talk about some food. And we're going to talk about all the cool things we're doing here at Panoma, because the summer is still here, if I recall. And it's a very fun place to be, which is Panoma Winery. Um, and before that, we're actually going to go to Cornell and Dobby, and we're going to find out what they're cooking in the kitchen for not just us, which is awesome, but all of our guests outside. And I say all, there's like 10 people outside. Uh, select space down. Here. Space down. So, Cornell, Dobby, what do you got going in the kitchen? Well, we've got a lot of hot things going, talking about hot outside. So, this week we got a little bit inspired by uh, a little Middle Eastern uh, spice. So, we have a, a lamb chop um, uh, on uh, some uh, butterscotch puree. That's a little bit of uh, butter lime, uh, butter lime um, mixture in there. And then we encrusted the, uh, the lamb chop with uh, uh, roasted pistachio and lavender. And then we're doing blueberries, because blueberries are in season. So we made a blueberry compote and then put that over, drizzle that over, and uh, voila. So that is it for tonight. And then we also have a little uh, Some surprise. surprise. Yeah. Are we going to? No. Not yet? Or? No, we're not going to reveal anything. No. What wine are we drinking? Oh, we with that? almost forgot. Yeah. So we got the Pinot Noir and the, and the bad boy here, the BDX. Um, all, all red, all red tonight. That's so, right. So the colors are going great. Um, we got some burgundy and Bordeaux going on the plate. Um, so let's let's do. What this. are you no, personally no. drinking? I'm having uh, Pinot Noir. Dobby, same here. Okay, so <laughs> yeah. so okay. the Pinot and looking away. Two to the, the heavier. Two to the BDX. Yes. All right, I love that. <laughs> All right, so, so, we're, what, so we're starting up with the splash of summer, you know, with yeah. the blueberries, and we're ending up with, uh, you know, a hint of fall. So those are two great, uh, I think, two yeah. great flavors. Yeah, a little bit of a transition. Um, the, you know, we have a arsenal of, of herbs and, and spices here, 
which I think is going to go awesome with with both of the wines. Yeah. Um, um, this and the, the the surprise. So and the surprise. Yes. I, I love, love surprises. I and love the lavender and blueberry. I love the blueberries. What farm did we? Do we know what farm we got those from? Local they, farm. Um, no. No. Buckins. Probably Buckins. Buckins. Buckins blueberry they farm, which is on Blueberries, right? Now. Yeah, they do. People are walking out of there with these bag loads of blueberries. Right. And they're great in smoothies. And they have fantastic ice cream. There. I know. Wow. We went and so, got some of yeah. girls. Uh, you did? I was not on that trip. No, you what weren't. Happened? We were doing the technical stuff here, uh, but we were yeah. eating ice cream. Sorry. Yeah, that's such a shame. <laughs> but we have lavender ice cream. Mm, that's good. <laughs> Oh, um, so besides just the food, which we have, and I love that little display the guys cooked up because it looks uh, fantastic. Um, let's go to Todd, yeah. my brother, outside with all of our VIP guests that are here today. Okay, here we are, another glorious day in Traverse City, and uh, we just like to share it with everybody. So tonight we have. 11 wonderful people enjoying this beautiful deck, enjoying the beautiful outside and getting a chance to taste this wonderful food. Um, I couldn't ask for better weather. I know um, you guys are drinking the uh, BDX and the Pinot Noir in there. I'm drinking a little rosé and I think we started these guys off with some sparkling, but we're going to work our way into it and pair up this food wonderfully with that wine. So Anyone out there can join us. Just uh, check in with uh, Jill at bonobowinery.com and you can have a wonderful evening. All right, cool. I love when we go to Todd because, you know, he's my brother. He's a ray of sunshine. Yeah, he's just a ray. He is. I was going to say something else. He is very happy. And um, the one thing is, is that we only, it's a select group, a uh, number of people. So you got to get those reservations quick because I know we're selling out um, all the way into like October. Okay, um, now your volume can go back up for another 15, 20 minutes. And then oh, all right. Thanks, Todd. Um, so uh, the other thing, um, we do have a promo code, which is Ralph812. So Ralph812 for Ralph Macchio in the date with a free bottle of wine with your first shipment when you join our wine club. Oh, so this is join the wine club and you get another free bottle of wine. Um, which is kind of awesome. And you know what? Um, Amy will sign it. Star Girl herself, herself will sign it. Star Girl's mom oh. will sign it. Um, so that's Ralph812. So you get a free bottle of wine uh, when you sign up for Wine Club uh, in the next, whatever, so many hours, obviously after this, because now it's post per week. But and just to know um, so that in order to get that, you have to email wineclub at bonobowinery.com to get your sign up. Oh, you just need to sign up for the wine club, and okay. it's that easy. Anything for a club member? Well, Dana, yes. Jill, you can answer that. Yeah, Jill, you can answer that. <laughs> um, uh, Dana, she will private message you. But the cool thing is, because now we're having these people outside on the deck, we get all sorts of fun people in. One of the guys uh, from Tennessee, and they brought us some bourbon. I mean, how cool is that? And I know Cornell is out here checking this out right now. Um, Aside from wine partners, all time. Favorite yeah. alcohol is bourbon. And this so is Luca Mariano. This could have been like a better little present for this. And week. this is a single barrel, 103 proof. Okay, yeah, that's going to get you where you want to go. Don't um, go too fast. Absolutely, right <laughs> away. <laughs> what? We have yeah. hair on this chest. Yes. Oh, no stay away from that right now. <laughs> uh, we don't know. But thank you to the guys. And that, that's beauty of being here because we get all sorts of people in. And I love bourbon. I don't think he knew that, but he brought it. Yeah. That, that was really good. Um, all right, so all right. now, without line, any further ado, let's yeah. uh, bring Ralph on if he is available. Jill is looking, uh, and maybe he's not. Maybe he's not on. Maybe we don't have him yet. Uh, we can't hear you, Jill. So we are going to do right one question. Him. We are going to do one question with Ralph too, uh, for some lucky viewer out there as well. So think of your question, type it in, send it to Jill, yeah. and uh, we can open that up. Is he? All uh, right, we were... he's on and he's unmuted. Yep. All right. Uh -huh. I'm Hooray. unmuted. Hi. Welcome to one of the unmuted. What's up, people? What's up, buddy? How are you? Well, I'm good. I'm just, just lapping into the Pinot right now. There we go. So are we. Salute. Cheers. Happy mm. Wine Wednesday. Cheers, cheers. Happy Wine Wednesday. Let me get you guys up on it. I got to, this is the old man glasses. Hang on. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, how are you? Where are you? 
I'm in Long Island, New York, which is home. Um, and we are doing uh, all well under these circumstances. But uh, it's great to be here, man. It's exciting. And thank you for sending the vino, which is a nice. Absolutely. Well, I think the, the cool thing about you is that, you know, you're known for a lot of things. Um, and you have a lot of things um, in the pipeline that come down. But a lot of people don't know that you love wine. You like uh, you you are a fan of wine, and not just a fan, but you actually really dive deep into different wines. Is that right? Yeah, I've um, it started probably in the mid '90s. No, no, before then, um, uh, I would say late '80s when when my career took off. <laughs> I started, and when it, maybe when I was cusping downward, I started to really start to learn about wine. No, my, my wife is in, uh, had a bunch of uh, doctor friends that would do wine tastings every Friday. So we would uh, go, and that's the best way to sort of educate yourself. And, um, you know, it was, uh, we actually attended a Robert Parker tasting in New York uh, when he was doing some of the 90 Bordeaux and um and that was after that but we went up to napa a few times and uh when i was in san francisco and then when i was doing my cousin Vinny pesci would basically have the polini manchache and shishandra manchache wow. and sasakaya and gaia and all these wines that i wouldn't pay for and i got <laughs> to try all them and then um uh certainly a decent i've learned a lot about the california wines coppola francis is up in uh, california so He's a big, I did the Outsiders, uh, he directed, and we, he would always send a bottle of wine around the holidays. So you, you combine all those things, and uh, we, my wife and I love it. We do tastings at our house in Montauk on the east end of Long Island sometimes, and it's, uh, it's awesome. This Pinot is delicious. It's a lovely. Uh, I love that. Can you, uh, you know, that you say that, I'm going to take it to the winemaker, if you don't mind, saying hello, Cornell. Uh, he's a South African guy. I've been here uh, around 20, 25 years, and he would love to hear you say that. I know. We love, it. and I, I, I almost, I almost opened the BDX, but I figured uh, this time of the evening, and that's a, it's a, a two thousand eighteen. So I assume this uh, the Pinot might be more uh, fruit forward at the time. The other one with all the Cab Franc might have a longer. Uh, longer life in the bottle, but I've learned guys, man, if you like it today, drink it today. <laughs> That's right. Answer, you know, buzz, yeah. So uh, most, like, when, that, delicious. I can't wait to try the, the rest of them. Go ahead. Well, good. No, it's like, you know, most wines, when they get purchased, they get consumed within eight hours. So um, hopefully, you know, you got it this morning and you're consuming it today. So you're just fitting right in. Yes. Um, but anyway, um, so, uh, I guess what do you what do you like about the the bonobo pinot? I mean, what's uh, the, the the pinot? I like well because I, you know, I I would there was up in Oregon. I had a bunch of pinot noir, which um, um, you know it was very, very successful in growing that that type of grape. And I I I learned to appreciate the pepperiness of a certain pinot noir, the raspberry, the cherry, and and it's a it's more of a it's an acquired, you know, the, those cabs are so in your face and, and the, the softness of the, of the, the Pinot Noir and the, uh, the Burgundy grape, if you will, is um, it took time for me, you know, it was easy to just drink Zinfandels at the upfront. It's like all fruit up front, high alcohol, good end result. <laughs> but then I've, right. I've learned to appreciate the Pinot Noir and I do have the Burgundy glass, those of you keeping score. Um, <laughs> well done, well played. It's, it's not in a Riesling or a Bordeaux. You know. I know. I like, I like that you're drinking it out of a burgundy glass because glass definitely makes a difference. It so, does make uh, a difference. It does make a difference. Um, this, I said cherry on this one. Ch cherry, a little chocolate maybe? Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. So that's one of the char uh, characteristics that we get from our uh, Northern Michigan uh, Pinots here. It's a lot of dark cherry. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the, the hint of the vanilla and the, and the cinnamon uh, spices, uh, that comes from, from the barrel. But the cherry um, and that maybe a slight hint of, 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 of a black pepper or like a peppery uh, thing. Uh -huh. that's, that's all coming from the cool climate uh, uh, pinot. So right. glad you like it, man. I, I personally, it's, 
is one of my, my favorites as well here. It's just a really well-balanced wine. And with what we've got going on here tonight on the plate, it's just going to blow your mind. Ralph, had you ever had you ever heard of uh, wineries in northern Michigan? That's a good question. No, no, I, I, I have not. But every, you know, it's one thing I have learned. I mean, even Long Island out here, we have the North Fork of North, North Fork. See, the stuff is working. The <laughs> of Long Island has, uh, uh, I mean, I think I think there's 72 wineries there. And it's amazing. Oh, wow. It's amazing. Not all of them are ones you want to talk about, but there are some, <laughs> there are some good ones. And every state I've, I've gone to, when I did a national tour of a, of a Broadway musical, believe it or not. And uh, and every almost every city or state you you learn about wines, and I try to visit the wineries just to sort of support that, and and also that's how you educate yourself. You know? Yeah, so, yeah. It's um you know the area is very much you know plays like uh, New York, um, Finger Lakes. Um, you know we have we're very you know well known for um, the cherry industry, but then. <laughs> The cherry industry is one of the largest exporters of cherries, tarts in, in the world. And what has happened is it's sort of, it's been transitioning into vineyards and, and such. And we started off. Uh, I, know, I know but, I have to come visit. <laughs> yeah, oh, well, you better. <laughs> you, you have to now. But look, I mean, there's so many things that we want to ask First you. First of all, we're just big fans. Yeah. You're I'm, just, I'm, I know you are. For <laughs> some the outsiders and it's really just an honor to talk to you right now. Well, it's and, great to uh, see you guys. And thank you for joining us. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. And this one always does a deep dive with our guests. So yes, I'm ready. Well, first off, I want to know, um, you know, there's things that I sort of, you know, when I went down that rabbit hole, you still have the 47, 48 Ford. Uh, so for the, the 47 Ford, and it's appearing in the Cobra Kai series uh, currently which um, re-drops again now on Netflix. It's just uh, August 28th, the uh, first 20 episodes of the series. It originally played on YouTube, YouTube Premium, but we've just uh, moved over to our new dojo, if you will, um, <laughs> which is uh, Netflix, which should be uh, very exciting. And so that, yes, that 47 Ford is uh, in the show. Um, it is the same car that I waxed on and waxed off back in 19... <laughs> It's, a, it's so amazing because there's there's look I I, I, I didn't want to get to Cobra Kai yet but okay let's go there first because well, it's, because I, like, I, if people have not seen that it is an amazing uh, show and the fact you're moving to Netflix get a bigger audience uh, bigger viewership I know it's August 28th you guys are the first two seasons are going to be shown and then they'll release that third, the third I, I, what has it been like for you because for us yeah. I mean I, I know nostalgic it's just it's it, the music everything is so good you just you know it's almost something you can taste it's so delicious to watch yeah oh, thank you listen i i would love to take all the credit for it um there is a there's a there's three great writers and creators that were the biggest karate kid fans growing up and they are making and creating the show collaboratively collaboratively with myself and william zabka um, they just found an angle into the Karate Kid universe, which has become a piece of pop culture and sort of a global uh, piece of cinema that has stood the test of time for 36 years. And this show just finds a new angle in to embrace all that nostalgia of the Karate Kid, all of that you remember, and yet still tell relevant stories for the next generation and and stir up all the all those moments, the rivalry between the nemesis and the, you know, the hero, and then you're not quite sure who you're rooting for because they both have uh, are flawed characters as as adults. It and it does it ties in all that stuff. It's comfort food for for people who grew up with that movie, and um, and we've just found the right, for lack of a better description, I'm channeling Mr. Miyagi. We found the balance, and it worked. Yeah. No, I think that's also, I've only seen the first season, I can't wait to see more, but I think it's really interesting how your kids intertwine. Yes. yes. That's cool. You know, that kind of just, because once your kids are involved, those are your heart and soul. And you're like, <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. You're like, back that off. That gets sticky. <laughs> right. That gets yeah. real sticky. <laughs> yeah. But that, that's the beauty, I think, of, of, of your show, because, you know, I think, you know, there's so many more layers, obviously, to your character. 
to William's character to just the show in general. And so hit, like you said, hitting it on, you know, that having the balance of reflecting on past uh, moments and then making things current. Yeah. But at the same time, I, what I did realize is you were, you've been pitched this concept probably 30 million times, correct? Yes, yes. Well, not this specific concept, but like, right. you know, it would be great. We'll get Rocky Balboa's kid <laughs> and your kid and they'll fight crime together. You know, I mean, I've heard a million. That's amazing. That's and amazing. I've, heard, I've heard a million. Of, and I, I would always say, listen, it's always easier to say no, no, protect the legacy. And it, I am very protective of it. It was always, it always felt smarter when I heard something that sounded like a short-sighted idea to let the legacy stand on its own and, and let it, uh, and let it be that way. This was, you know, as a combination, a smart idea, but more so, we didn't have these streaming services. We didn't have the ability to tell a five hour movie and cut it up into half, 10, 10 half hour parts. It would right. have been a major motion picture, um, which now you can't go see anyway right now at the moment. So sure. it, uh, it allowed the characters to breathe. And Karate, yeah. Kid was, Karate Kid was a very black and white, good over evil. Cobra Kai is very gray. And we take a deep dive into all the nuances of characters in their midlife and then how their um, actions uh, are, you know, are reacted by their own kids in the next generation and the responsibility it takes. And then on top of that, it's just kick-ass fun, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Ralph, you know, one of my first movies I did, I did with Billy Zapka. And I did remember asking him, like, what, what it was like for him? And and he goes, man, after that movie, everyone wanted to fight me in the streets. <laughs> oh, God. Like, and I'm sure it's you so probably bad. had similar experiences. Like, I, I had less similar because I just think they, they took one look at me and they said, no, it's not worth it. He <laughs> 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 just looked at these orangutan arms and said, no, you know. I mean, that was a, that's sort of the beauty of. Oh, no. Uh, you're good. Oh, no. You're frozen. Oh, no. no. We lost Ralph. <laughs> yeah. So it's no. okay. It's gonna start up. Okay, so we're gonna when he comes back yes. here in a minute. Sorry, Ralph, you got broken. Ralph, if you <laughs> get back into it, we're, yeah. we're gonna come right back to you. We have a really some fun questions. Um, and I'll tell you guys this, just the things that I've learned is that um, instead of Daniel LaRusso, it was supposed to be Daniel Weber, which is kind of random. Um, you're the best around. Cornell, you guys want to sing that song? Anybody? I'll dance. That song was supposed to be for a different movie and not Karate Kid, which would have been strange. Um, and Happy Gilmore's grandma is in Karate Kid, and she was Happy Gilmore's grandma. And she, well, you yeah. know. She looks like a grandma. Um, and, um, and then in 2007, the band No More Kings did a song called Sweet Play which is, if you haven't seen this video, it's very much a premise to what Cobra Kai is right now. Okay. But it's like all the characters are in it and um, it's just, they're older. So just very much like Cobra Kai, mm -hmm. which is uh, unbelievable. I and mean, that's something that I had heard of, but you know, when you see stuff like that, you're like, whoa, this is such good, you know, I mean, it's just obviously fun to go down that rabbit hole. Um, I know there's so much, and obviously- I'm back. Ralph, okay. back. Oh, okay. Hi, Ralph, you're back. No, I'm back on 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 my hotspot because my Wi-Fi dropped. We had a storm here on the east coast. Yes, yes. Brutal, and we're still so. I'm on the hot. I'm through my Ooh. iPhone. Okay. <laughs> yeah, don't. Yeah, okay. we. Is, that's what is like. your home okay? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Thank right, you. Good. So uh, where were we? I was just. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead, Matt. Well, I was just giving detail of yeah. like some of the little. Um, stuff you found out. Yeah, some of the stuff we found out. Um. I do want to ask you, um, again, everybody, August 28th is when Cobra Kai comes out, but um, you guys did a video called no, from No More Kings called Sweet Delay. Right, and right. I feel like that video is was very much a precursor to Cobra Kai. I mean, a little bit, right? I mean, you guys are, you guys are whole. It's interesting. Yeah. Billy, Billy uh, created that video and... Um, and it, it turned out great. It turned out terrific. And it, you know, he always had ideas. He always wanted to go back to the well way before I did. I never. I was always. It's. I just felt unless it, the the writing and the angle was correct, 
Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, the sort of the down and out of the Cobra Kai guys and yeah. the Russo doing well. But then also How I Met Your Mother did uh, a decent amount with that. We both guessed it on that where Barney Stinson, the Patrick Harris character thought that the real, you know, the real bully was Daniel LaRusso who won with the legal right. kick, the worst ending in cinema history ever in America, <laughs> you know, right. and, and William Zapp is the true victory. So it's sure. percolating in pop, in, in pop culture and, and, uh, and through the fandom over the last 10, 15 years, you know, and sort of, so that's, that's why it's also right for it. But the, the, uh, I think maybe that, um, that lended itself to the creators of the show saying, you know what, this would be an interesting angle in, but it, it was really about, for them, it was about, okay, what happens to a bully in his forties? You know, who, what, right. who does that guy become? And, uh, and then what happens to the guy who has the perfect human Yoda as his mentor? What happens right. to his life? You know? mm -hmm. And so um, it's really the exploration. It's, it's a lot of fun. And, and hopefully with the uh, new chapter starting on Netflix, the end of the month, we will be getting to do it a long time as long as we're allowed to shoot again. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I feel like we could probably talk Friday Kid all day. We, we have, um, I, I want to talk outsiders. Yeah, yeah outsiders is a, is a near and oh dear to me. I love like, that movie. That cast, it's just phenomenal. And was that pretty, like a life changing experience for you? Or? It was because I read the book when I was 12. And you did? I, yeah, That's the one. I did. So. <laughs> oh, no, no. Hotspot. Click in. Come on, Hotspot. I got oh. to, and it was the first time I ever read a book that I was in. Oh, it's. Speaking down. No, it's good. Am I yeah, okay? Yeah, Am I yeah. there? Yeah. Hello? Okay, I'm back. I gotta talk. Anyway, the outsiders is like it's like the your first girlfriend, your first kiss. You never forget it. It's it's uh, the role I wanted with the, a filmmaker that is legendary and a cast that is pretty pretty well known. Yeah, it's epic. I mean, it's just it's so awesome, yeah. man. You've been you've had decades, four or five decades in Hollywood. Crazy. Right. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, crazy. Yeah, totally. You're wrong there. Um, um, wait, I, I do want to ask you one question. Did you sa did you save a baby porpoise? In no, it's not. I, I should, you know, I should take that down. But I love getting that. I love getting that question every couple of years. It's somewhere in some IMDb something. But I'm glad, I'm glad you've done your research. <laughs> Wait, so you are a fan of marine life, is that right? You're, you take care I'm of a fan of marine life, life. I have no problem. I would have not walked away <laughs> if I saw the baby porpoise, but I okay. did not. Uh... Okay, that's not true. All right, it's not true. Okay, um, we, have one, we have one question outside, if you don't mind, if that's all right. We have a, a group here out on the deck. Is that okay? Sure. Okay. okay. Uh, Todd? There you go. What's hello, hello. You? All right, we're out here in uh, sunny Traverse City, and we have a question from Jim. Go ahead. Hey, Ralph. Uh, Greetings from Traverse City. A uh, huge Cobra Kai fan, uh, Cry Kid fan, but we all want to know is like, when are we going to see My Cousin Vinny too? Just kidding. That wasn't my question. <laughs> uh, so obviously we know that uh, Elizabeth Shue is reprising her role as Allie this season. So a couple quick questions. How awesome was it to have her back in the mix? Two, uh, when are you and uh, Crease going to fight? And three, how long do you see this series going? Because I, I mean, the stories expand every year and there's amazing. Every season gets better and better. So how, how far can you see this going? First of all, thank you. I could only answer the last question because that's the only one I have an answer for, um, um, which is, uh, which is with the writers have always planned at least six seasons. Um, they have that arced out, so we don't know if that's going to happen or not. Um, we're hoping for that. We're, you know, season three is in the can, and we shot it, and it's drop dead awesome. And by strict uh, rule, Netflix, I can't say a darn thing. <laughs> uh, we know she was on set, Ralph. <laughs> well, I don't. She wasn't on my set. <laughs> but, uh, Right. Uh, maybe, maybe her and Johnny Lawrence run away together and they never told me. That. <laughs> okay. That's, I, I lose the girl. Reframe I lose the girl. Okay, reframe question. How, how would you love to see her brought back into this series uh, as a love triangle like it was originally? Or like, what, what would your ideal, writers aside, what would you like to see her brought back as? Um, I've never thought of that. These are, these are, yes, you have. <laughs> No, I, I haven't. I haven't actually. I, I haven't, you know, 
I think that for Johnny Lawrence, um, you know, LaRusso has kind of moved on in his life. He moved on from Johnny Lawrence in his life till Johnny Lawrence came back into his life. Um, and thankfully, because now I have a show. Um, but uh, I think I, I, I think for Johnny, it's more important where that lands. I think for LaRusso, it would be nice to potentially tie up the misunderstanding that happened uh, and ended their relationship. It's always nice to see that with legacy characters. Um, and when am I going to fight Crease? Um, as soon as I could stand him up. <laughs> good answer. That's a good, that's a really good answer. I think. Um, Thank you. Yeah, I think. Um, wait, tell me this. Um, in Karate Kid, was it really Daniel Weber before Daniel? It was. was it was. It was, it was Danny, Danny Weber in the original script. And I walked in the room and they added some vowels. You know, I guess they said, <laughs> um, no, it just, he just became Daniel uh, LaRusso. And, and, uh, but he was Danny at times, but we always, I always liked the name Daniel so much. So that's my son's name. Um, <laughs> but, uh, uh, and Daniel's son just became part of, um, you know, just part of just like the headband people ask about that. That was never scripted and now it's forever tied to my head, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, listen, I know we're almost out of time and um, do you have chat? Is it one more question here? Is that all right? Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, Jill, do we have one question? We're doing Facebook Live, so it's, you know, getting on to the millions in the Facebook world. Um, that's yeah. uh, Jill, do we have any and you questions? Can't vet, you can't vet them out, it's gonna be interesting. Okay, hey. Hi, Hi. nice to meet you. You too, as well. Uh, big fan, so we've gotten a lot of feedback and comments about how, number one, you don't age. You look very good. You look just like you did from Karate Kid. Lots of people are saying that. Um, and just a lot of people are huge fans of yours and happy to see you back. Um, but the question that um, we got that I'm going to ask is about My Cousin Vinny, because that's personally one of my favorite movies of yours as well. Um, what is your favorite memory from My Cousin Vinny from making it and just kind of that experience? Because that's still by far, I think, one of the best movies that was ever made. It's a great, thank you. It's a great, I call My Cousin Vinny the late for dinner movie. Because if it's on, you're just going to be late for dinner because you just have. <laughs> that's, that's, that's good. <laughs> every, there's every setup pays off um, in space. A fantastic script, uh, a star turn by Marissa Tomei and Pesci was at his peak right then with Goodfellas. And um, the thing I, I mean, I, it was, you know, the, the interesting thing with that role is I had a ton to do with the onset, with the setup in the first act. You know, I got an attorney in the family, my cousin Vinny, and I get to do the title drop and all that stuff. Uh, and then I had a lot in the courtroom where I was just watching like theater. Um, the moment, two of them I'll give you. One was the scene where I say I shot the clerk because we shot it, but then the notes came back from the studio. Well, we needed to be a statement and a question at the same time. So I must have done like, you know, 72 takes of, I shot the clerk, I shot the clerk. I shot, <laughs> I shot no, and they were, and there, it was it just, you know, finding that through line of it being a statement and a question at the same time. I remember that specific moment and I'll never forget watching Austin Pendleton, the great character actor playwright uh, <laughs> as the stuttering public defender. <laughs> We, if you watch the movie again, just look at me and Pesci and Mitchell Whitfield who played my friend, and we are just unhinged. Just, it's like, we just, it, it, we're far and soft in the background, soft for those of you who don't know, that is so uh, um, And it's just, he just, not, and he did it like theater, you know, he, because it was theatrical, it's a courtroom. So it was really like having a front row seat to something except I wasn't supposed to be laughing and covering my face. Uh, uh, those, those, are awesome. things that come that, those are those are great I memories. I mean, yes. especially my cousin Vinny, because it's such a again, it's such another movie, it's such an iconic classic. Yeah. Um, do um, when's the last time you've seen out that you watched Outsiders? Say this again, I'm sorry. When when was the last time that you actually watched Outsiders? I watched the Outsiders about uh, <laughs> four years ago because I did a play in New York and the cast came out to my house and uh, one of the kids was like, uh, from the question, like, 
uh, 11 years old and he was reading it in school. So we watched mm -hmm. the movie, cover, you know, curtain to curtain. And um, I, I, I love that film. I love, I love the memories of it. There's a kindred spirit between all us guys and obviously the beautiful Diane Lane. Uh, there, you know, it's just, you see these folks over the years and you know you sort of all started in that camp together. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's a special one. And uh, I still connect with Coppola. I, a couple of years ago in Napa, we did a, Francis and I did a talk back at, um, at uh, one of the theaters up in Napa full of, you know, middle schoolers. And it just, it keeps giving back in that way. When I go on Instagram, here's the thing, because I know you have to cook some pistachio, like, <laughs> but um, when I, I, uh, I go on Instagram, because you have to, you know, start to do all this stuff. And 90% of the Instagram people are all these 12 and 14 year old kids that are just like Rob Lowe is so hot and Ralph Macho is so cute and, and whatever. And they, they just don't know that we're 75 years old. <laughs> <laughs> and I can be but it's oh, fun. that's so great. That's yeah. so great. Our friends were literally just over at the house over the weekend and their daughter was watching and she's read, reading The Outsiders. Right. Just, just the fact it. that it's the book that every kid yeah. reads. Yeah, it really is. And cool. they're just going to watch the movie and, yeah. and it's yeah. just like constantly, like it won't always be giving back to our yeah. yeah, it's, it's really wonderful. I got lucky. Thank you so much, Ralph. Oh, thank you so you much. We appreciate you being on. Yeah. Cheers. Have a great Wednesday. Uh, we can't wait to hear how that BDS does. Too. Thank you so much, man. I had a great time. <laughs> Take care, buddy. Okay. Cheers. Bye. Salute. Cheers. Salute. <laughs> All right. How cool was that? Ralph Macchio, man. Um, if you haven't seen Cobra Kai, yes. you must check it out. It is so good. It's so it's good. It's the kind of thing that we started watching and then we couldn't stop. Yeah. Like, I think yeah. we watched almost the entire season. You, you know, why I love it is because not only being nostalgic, but also like when you first watch it, you're like, wait, this is, I don't know, this is right, this is wrong. I didn't know which way to go. And at the end of the first episode, which they're half hour episodes, yeah. we were hooked, man. We were I so know. hooked. I know. It's, it's, a, it's a great show. And again, Netflix. I'm happy it's going to be on Netflix. Too, I, it's a little bit easier to get to. Your, your cousin's uh, son mm -hmm. put us on like, to the bread, and we were like, how do we connect to a TV? Right. Yeah, we felt old at that moment. We are old. But, but now, okay. that looks so easy. <laughs> yeah, for everybody, everybody can use <laughs> so it. So it'll be good to, to um, be able to watch it. Yeah, so, yeah, so check it out. Oh, Ralph is lovely. Isn't he so lovely? Wow. Right. I mean, I actually, so my one of my closest friends, Deborah Marcus and Andrew Marcus, are very close to him. Yeah. I didn't want to say that, but, um, but okay. he's just a uh, uh, Incredible human being, just so kind, so genuine, very authentic. Oh, you know what I forgot to ask him? Is that when I randomly, when we were little kids, we started saying this in the car. Whenever you would take a oh, right, yeah. right hand turn, you'd somebody say, Which way? You'd say, We'll take a Ralph Macchio. And if it was a left, you'd say, Take a little Blue Diamond Phillips. That's, and I still say this today when he's like, Which way? Take a Ralph. Take a Ralph Macchio. But I know. Oh, Wait, man. You make it sound like everyone does it. Nope. Sorry, you didn't do it. Guys, anybody else? No. Nope. Okay. Sorry. Uh, well, I learned it from me. So don't worry about it. What? <laughs> um, anyway, thank so, you, yeah, thank you, Ralph. Again, uh, sign up for Wine Club. Type in Ralph812. Um, you can uh, get a free bottle of wine for the Wine Club. Again, Ralph812. Uh, send to you, Wine, wine yeah. Club at Bonobo Winery. Wine Club at Bonobo Winery .com. And uh, you can send uh, send us your info, and we'd love to have you and try out some of these wonderful wines that Ralph just tried with Pinot Noir and Vignette. It's pretty good. Yeah, it's very tasty. I mean, the Pinot Noir is like a staple in your mouth. I know it is. It's... And the VDX is if you just want that fuller body down in the red. Yeah. So, I love how much Ralph knew about mine. Yeah. That's cool. Well, we're going to have to get him up here to Traverse City soon. And next week, we do have uh, the Cheese Lady. Who's coming to town? So we are carrying uh, a few of our. What is that, Joe? It wasn't uh, me. Uh, I think oh, we have a few of our okay. wines being paired with um, with yes. Cheese Lady. We've done that before. It was a hugely successful, so we yes. want to do that again. We did it when we were in LA. Yeah. So we got our little mm -hmm. shipment of cheeses that we got yeah. to chase. They're really good. And we're going to be starting to sell tickets to that. So similar to how we've got the folks out on the patio tonight. 
We are gonna um, be opening it up to a larger group of people to come in still safely, socially distanced, but um, so you can do the live or the, the cheese and wine pairing here on the patio. Um, then we'll, today, hopefully we'll get those tickets up for sale um, in the next day or so. Um, and if you want to try, uh, taste at home, we're not doing shipping of the cheese because it's so hot out, but if you're local to Traverse City or in, in the area, you can pick up the wine and the cheese. We'll have a, a nice pack for you to pick up here at the winery starting um, this week as well. Bill, are we putting on the website what cheeses we're tasting so if people want to go buy them locally? Yes, we will. So it'll be, um, so we'll, we'll list kind of which the wines that we're featuring along with um, the cheeses that we're pairing with them. So if you want to do that from home and you're not here in Traverse City, you can pick up the, the same cheeses. Yep. And so just the, the cheese tea, the cheese lady will be here and we're doing the wine and cheese pairing next Wednesday. So it's the, yes. the next Cool. I'm, a, I'm very excited. Uh, I know, very excited because uh, the cheeses are so good. And then we're paired, it works out really well. And then I think the weekend after that, we'll go the week after that, we have Sonny Anderson coming on. Um, we are talking to Marcus Samuelson about coming on, which is a fantastic chef in New York. Um, so we have a lot of fun chefs coming on and some special guests. I know we'll be Ralph Macchio, that'll be tough. Yeah. But, um, so you know. We, 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 so, um, let's go over to Cornell because he and Davi are uh, almost finished. Guys, take it away. All right, so we started with Blake. As you can see, we got the lamb chops there on the on the be right, um, the butternut squash be right, and then those little golden dripples in there is maple syrup on the plate there. Right there. Um, and then we did a little bit of that over the lamb chops too. Um, you see the pistachios, roasted pistachios on the side um, with the lavender. And a little it smells spray. amazing. So, looks amazing. Yeah. And they are about ready to go out. When you say go out, does that mean to us or to the people outside? <laughs> Oh no! I was getting so excited. Don't you feed your guests first? Yes, we do. Feed the guests first, but you know, it's a short show, so you don't have much time left. Um, all right. Well, we are going to start uh, plating these. You guys have done a phenomenal job once again. Was this difficult? No. Yes. Uh, Can you take them out? Okay. No. Good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, is this your first time cooking this dish, or no? Uh, I had it on Monday night, yeah. and then tonight I'm going to cook on Monday for Wednesday. Yeah, hey, thank you. I don't want you and Carter to be the testers since you are such carnivores. Um, I want you oh. to dig into that. Right. Well, I'm anticipating a fabulous deluxe parade. <laughs> well, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think we're going to do Carter's it. head, but Wait, otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> nice oh. one. <laughs> Did you guys know that uh, I used to be tied up when I was a little kid, and he was <laughs> I mean, yeah, we'll yeah, wrestle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh man! If we go to the Harrington's. We have yeah, yeah, footage. Totally. We know what really happened. Okay, guys. Yeah, we were... Oh, we'll give you another one. I'm putting a little. Yeah, some water on that fire. Did ever realize how brothers actually live? Real life. Um, yeah, like children. Yeah. Um, okay, <laughs> so uh, I don't think we're actually going to get to taste it right now because we are actually <laughs> plating the fruit it outside. Yes. Um, thank you so much for joining yeah, us thank tonight. You for joining us. I had a wonderful time. We hope you did too. Uh, uh, be safe, be healthy, be happy. Join Cheers. us next week on Wednesday. Wednesday. And we will have some cheese yes. pairings. Yes. Come join us in house. And come join us in house yes. too. Whenever you can, we'd love to see you right here. Bye. Bye bye. Salut. 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 Cheers. 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 Salut. All right. Okay. Woo woo.